Hello. Salam alaikum. It's me, John Davison. Wa ana kunt mutatawa ma hayat salam fil thamaniyat fi medinat Burkan. Yalla nahar fi Burkan. Ana kunt mutatawa wa kunt ustad de lorat in Zuzia fi thanawiya de Lemon. Hi, I'm John Davison. I'm also the director of the Tangier American Legation Institute for Moroccan Studies, which probably most of you would have recognized as the old American Legation of Tangier when many of you studied Arabic here at the Legation. Uh, the Legation, as you know, is the oldest continuously owned diplomatic property belonging to the United States. It was given to the United States by Sultan Muley Suleiman in 1821. 1821, 200 years ago, this year we celebrated our bicentennial and we're continuing the celebrations into next year. And it served as the United States' primary diplomatic mission in Morocco through the 19th century and half of the 20th century up until uh, independence of Morocco in 1955. Perhaps you know from when you lived here, it's a compound of buildings that expanded over time, especially in the 20th century. I believe right now where we're sitting in the research library that this might have been some of the bedrooms that belong to uh, stagiaires who were learning Arabic and French here in Tangier. The legation, after it ceased being a diplomatic mission, was briefly a language training institute for American diplomats learning Arabic and it was falling into a very bad state of disarray. And it's in no small part, I'm told, due to the efforts of you and your peers who volunteered separately to help to begin to restore this really valuable property. It served as a Peace Corps language training center and then after you completed the Peace Corps language program, the State Department was going to sell it and a group of friends of the legation, including American diplomats, uh, former and currently serving diplomats in the 1970s, and uh, Americans living in Tangier and elsewhere in Morocco, and some private academic American professors persuaded the U.S. government not to sell this property, but instead to rent it to an association who had as a vision creating a museum that would honor Moroccan-American friendship and historic relations. The uh, Museum was officially designated a U.S. national landmark in 1982-83, the only U.S. national landmark located outside the United States and its current or former territories. And today, as you know, it's a museum, but before we talk about our role as a museum, I want to talk a little bit about what I understood your role was here as language students. Um, as I mentioned, several of you actually volunteered to help rebuild the legation and we were very lucky to be given an album of photographs of you doing the restoration and you'll see from these photographs that there are images of you in the kitchen, there are images of you, images of you outside um, and it really, if although I wasn't there, it, it seems like the work that you did really did help save this building. And then, of course, there, this was your language training center, and we have some wonderful images of you uh, and your former director, uh, Ambassador Richard Holbrook, who actually was my former boss when I worked uh, at the U.S. Mission of the United Nations. And um, he once told me that the best job he ever had in his whole career was as um, Peace Corps director in, in Morocco. And he had a pretty impressive career, I'm sure you all agree. The Peace Corps presence continued beyond the language training phase. In the 1980s, when I was a volunteer, there were volunteers who did summer projects up here at the Legation. And in my particular cohort, some of those volunteers included a man named Jeffrey Self, a friend named uh, Valerie Stutz, and another friend, Chris Stevens, who, as you know, went on to serve in the Foreign Service and became our ambassador to Libya before he was killed in Benghazi. In addition to those volunteers volunteering here at the Legation in the 90s, other Peace Corps volunteers, including Michael Toller and Rosemary Jabari and others, helped create a second library at the Legation, 
What you're looking at here is the research library, but they created a community library across the street. It's no longer used as a library. It's used as, in the best kind of Peace Corps tradition, a literacy classroom for, uh, in partnership with a local historical preservation society. Since 1999, the legation and our partners, FATEM, Fondation Tangel Medina, began what we call an Arabic and economic women's literacy program for women from this neighborhood of the Medina. And for those of you who study here, you know that this isn't the richest part of the old Medina of Tangier. In fact, it's historically been the poorest and most marginalized. And it was Peace Corps volunteers, again, posted in Tangier and elsewhere, who came up to create this community service library. And then, since then, other Peace Corps volunteers have continued to have an impact uh, to support the legation. Uh, we have numerous Tangier American Legation Institute fellows who were prominent Peace Corps volunteers, including Susan Gerson Miller and Professor Susan Schaefer Davis and others, who uh, served as volunteers, then went on in their own right to have very, very impressive academic careers. And they support the legation. They serve as fellows. Two Peace Corps volunteers serve on our board, two to my knowledge. And they are Michael Toller, our board secretary, and the president of Friends of Morocco, uh, Tim Resch. Hello, Tim. I know you're there. And we miss you, and we hope you can come back. Even now, since I've been the director, I've been here about seven years, we've hosted Peace Corps volunteers who met with a congressional delegation led by uh, Senator Kane of Virginia, and which also included several uh, members from uh, the House of Representatives of the Hispanic Caucus. We've hosted podcasts with uh, three different former Peace Corps volunteers, some of whom were Fulbright Fellows and others uh, grantees from the American Institute of Maghreb Studies. We are the affiliate of that institute here in Morocco, and those three uh, volunteers who came to mind, one was Peter Kitlas, who talked about Moroccan Ottoman diplomatic history, Annie Gall, who talked about the cuisine of Tetuan, and Mike Turner, who actually talked about teaching Derija to Americans. That's right, teaching Derija to Americans. Um, we are looking forward to welcoming new returned volunteers, both as Ames grantees, and I know there are some coming again as Fulbright grantees, and they always have an invitation to come up to the legation and to record a podcast about the work and the research that they're doing. There's a couple of last elements I would like to raise about Peace Corps Morocco and Peace Corps at the legation. The first one is, I'm told that you all created your own entertainment space, I suppose we should call it, that you very nicely named the Cistern Chapel. Uh, we're going to share some images of that today. And as you can see, the Cistern Chapel, I wouldn't say it's alive and kicking because it's closed and not open to visitors, but it's in remarkably good shape considering that it did serve as a cistern after you left for geez, until I think the early 1990s when we finally replaced it with some above-ground water tanks. And two years ago, we decided at the legation to honor your service by creating in our museum a Peace Corner. Here's a nice photo of two of my cohorts from the 1980s, Stephen O'Dowd from Tetuan and Rhonda Brown from Gersif. And then the last thing, and it's just a small memento of Peace Corps service in Morocco, not here at the legation, but I'm about to leave. And one of the things I inherited in my own apartment, because I don't know where uh, Dr. Richard Holbrook lived, but the directors of the legation, both as a museum and also as directors when it was a diplomatic mission, the heads all lived here. And I inherited this cookbook. Now, it was not the same cookbook that I had as a volunteer. It's called Kitchen Guide, but it was one of these cookbooks that was meant to help us volunteers cook our own food using Moroccan kitchens. I remember their, uh, the Fordham Filistini, the Palestinian oven, when we had to bake on top of the stove. Um, this one is a modern version. It includes a whole chapter on vegan cuisine. I don't recall that vegetarian cuisine was part of the cookbook back in the 80s when we were given it. Unfortunately, we don't have a copy of Where There Is No Doctor. If any of you have an extra one that you'd like to lend, 
we'd be happy to share it. I'm about to leave and the woman is going to replace me. I'm sure she will value this as well and that particular process. And then finally I'd like to talk a little bit about some of the cultural programming that we've done since I've been here that we think keeps up the spirit of Peace Corps. I mentioned the, the women's literacy program, but we've also begun programs that reach out to young people, both in the Medina but in other parts of the city. In the Medina, we began an English language scholarship program in partnership with the American Language Center of Tangier, where we offer scholarships to high school science students, four-year scholarships. Um, some of them have already gone into the International Baccalaureate program, and some of them have been accepted into the best engineering faculty of Abdul Malik Saad University here in Tangier in Tetuan. We've begun a program to support the arts. A former colleague of ours, uh, Ayub Jamal, set up a program that would urge you to watch if you like Moroccan music. It's called She Stage. It comes from She Heja, some stage, and what a stage it was. We had concerts here in a, what I think was where you ate, <laughs> I'm not from the photos I've seen, which is now our central gallery, where we've had concerts by Moroccan singer-songwriters. Our hashtag was support Moroccan artists where we sometimes have audiences of upwards of 400 people, over 90% Moroccan, and over 90% of them young Moroccans, and a very good mixture of Moroccan men and Moroccan women attending live events. Of course, we had to stop the live events for the pandemic, and uh, we continued the She States tradition, and uh, we had live streamed events. And if you go to our Facebook page at Tangier American Legation Institute for Moroccan Studies, you can see five concerts, live concerts, from the legation, from different rooms in the space. And the last one, for those of you who were privileged enough to study Amazirkt when you were volunteers, is by a great young uh, Amazirkt group from the Atlas called Jubentuja, and I'm sure you would really, really like that concert. It's already had almost 100,000 views on our Facebook page. And then the last thing we've done is we've set up an arts program for youth and for special needs children where we work with another partner, the uh, Mumkin Cooperative, uh, led by uh, another Ayub, Ayub Lahlu. These are young people who themselves in the cooperative came out of programs for at-risk youth and it's their vision to support the arts at a neighborhood street level. They focus on street performances in a some of the new neighborhoods of Tangier. If you haven't been here for a while, you wouldn't recognize the city of Tangier. It has now got well over a million people with neighborhoods that are almost entirely made up of either internal migrants from rural and mountain regions of Morocco or from parts of West Africa. And they work with youth associations with our support to work on uh, what they call spectacle homa, which means a performance in the neighborhood. And they bring youth from the different neighborhoods from different youth associations and they put them together to perform. Uh, West Side Story comes to mind from an American perspective and they uh, do street performances. Again, during the pandemic they weren't able to do that but they did film a street performance in the legation and at, at another historic art space at the bottom of the Medina called Burj Al Hajwi which believe it or not is a converted military space uh, into the arts. We were the first. We converted a diplomatic space into arts and culture. Since then, the government of Morocco and the Tangier have created an uh, art space out of military spaces at the base of the Medina. And then a second one, which we did as part of our bicentennial celebration, was Spectacle Teras, performance on the roof. And uh, you'll see that both of them were COVID safe performances. The same group of our partners from FATEM and from uh, Munkin Cooperative did COVID safety and hygiene workshops and we've got some videos of those on Facebook as well. So we're still trying to keep up the Peace Corps tradition and we really hope that when Peace Corps comes back to Morocco, volunteers will be able to come up and visit and why not? Maybe some of them can do summer projects up here and we especially hope that you will come up to visit. And if you're interested in supporting us, Tim Resch has got some ideas of how you could do that and also you could visit our website and there's information about donating uh, to the legation and yes you can specifically donate and designate that your donations could go to the women's literacy program or to the youth arts programming or something that reflects the values of Peace Corps. So, Elif Shukr and uh, 
We hope to welcome you to Tangier soon. Stay safe, and thanks again.